Hey there, Pittsfield. Matt Tucker, Pittsfield Community Television's Public Access Coordinator, here to tell you about a really exciting event we did here at the Berkshire Athenaeum Auditorium. It was an event called PCTV Studio to You, where we took the entire PCTV production experience, studio, editing, green screen, camcorders, jib, everything that you could imagine that PCTV has, and stuffed it in the auditorium here at the Athenaeum and created a very cool group of television programs. Everything you're about to see in the program that's coming up after I'm done speaking was created by people who came to that event. Uh, some of them were in front of the camera, some of them were behind the camera. So we're really excited to share this event with you and show you the fantastic time that all of these people had at PCTV Studio to You. Let's watch. Hello, this is Ellie Sheva Malfato reporting live from, the outside, from outside the White House at a recent press conference. The President of the United States reiterated First Amendment support for the communities and individuals to access their local cable television. The access was established as a proposition of the Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984. For more information on how you can obtain this access in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, visit www.pittsfieldtv.org. For PCTV News, this has been Ali Sheva Malfato. This is Eternity and Audra. We're going to ask, I'm going to ask them about what their favorite things are. So, what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? My favorite would be the Thin Mints, mainly because they're chocolatey, and I like chocolate. Uh, <laughs> my favorite would be cookies. <laughs> Who is your favorite Girl Scout leader? Girl Scout leader? Well, Miss Jennifer, obviously. <laughs> Well, um, I'd go with a person. Uh, what is your favorite state? Favorite state? That would be Massachusetts, baby. <laughs> Mine would be Tennessee. Y'all. What is your favorite animal? Mine would be a cat. Mine would be a wolf. Oh. Oh. What is your spirit animal? My spirit animal, I feel like I am like a cat. I have that meowing personality. <laughs> Mine would be like a wolf because I am independent and insane. Good job, Audra. Oh, shut it. Who is your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher, that would be Mr. Ward. My favorite teacher, that would be Miss Peckham. No, Miss Serker. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza all the way. <laughs> My favorite food is the food. You're very descriptive <laughs> with your answers. So are you. What is your favorite flower? My favorite flower, I love lilacs. My favorite they flower? My, heart. my favorite flower, mine would be a, um, a black rose. Which is a flower. <laughs> Did you that? know that? So, so, what is your favorite color? Favorite color? That would be turquoise and teal. <laughs> My favorite color? That would be um, red and blue. <laughs> what is what is your hobby? What is one of your hobbies? My favorite hobby would be biking. My favorite hobby would be being <laughs> annoying and and, and um, pranking my brother. Oh, you're really good at that. Thank you. That's both, so nice. Both of them. Who, if you have a pet, what is who is your favorite pet? <laughs> Can I say I want a llama? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Sure, a llama would be a pretty nice pet or an alpaca, you know, just squish the little fur. <laughs> my favorite pet would preferably be an armadillo. I thought you were going to say a lizard. Close enough. It'd be an armadillo because it's an armadillo. Good answer. What is your favorite candy? Candy. Ooh. Hershey's chocolate. Uh, I'd go with um, candy. <laughs> Thanks. What is your favorite quote 
clothing we're at. Cat and Jack, they're very comfortable clothes. Yeah. Under Armour. And that's all I know. Um, what is your favorite... What is your favorite movie? Oh my god. Marigold. Hmm. I wonder. What is your favorite TV show? I don't watch TV shows. I have no cable. I don't watch TV shows because I don't like TV shows. They all suck. What is your least favorite TV show? <laughs> no comment. Answering this question. What is your least favorite movie? Oh my. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but it's like something under my bed or whatever. The monster under my bed? No. I don't know. Um mine would be blanking. I don't remember. Uh, what is your favorite book? Book? Um, sisters. <laughs> don't leave me. Not that interested. Sophia? Sure. Awesome. You're Um, do you want to ask questions together this time? Oh, but, 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 like, we're the host or she? Does one of you want to be the interviewer, the host? We're both going to. Huh? We're both going to. You're both going to. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. What's your topic today? First, or should I? Uh, you can introduce us. Okay. Like Actually, no. You want me to introduce yes. us? Yes. I need to practice saying that. So I'll be like, hello, my name is Eternity. This is my fellow host, Audra, and today we have our guest, McKenna. And then you can say the first question. A little. It's not a question. Yes, it not is. Not a question. I got guns in my head. No, I feel like, like we should just like start singing. I, I don't know, it just feels right. Uh, 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 Aaron. I'm high on believing. Oh. So what do you do here? I don't know. Do you guys want to be in that raffle question? Yes. 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 Wait, I want to yes, sign yes, my name. Yes. Can you sign can my you name too? Mine? Does anybody <laughs> like to go? Just like I was trying to say hallelujah. I don't want to leave. I don't really want to work with the camera. This is the oldest start singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not us. What? What? Say goodbye to all the viewers. Why, hello there. Welcome to the Grand Canyon, the place where the big hole is. My name is Kathleen Mogul, and you're watching this show on PCTV. Thinking of national parks, it reminds me, hey, did you know that back home in Pittsfield, there's a channel dedicated to national, state, and local government? It's called City Link, and it can be found on Spectrum Cable at Channel 1303. City Link is just one of the many services offered by Pittsfield Community TV, and it takes my breath away. Woo.
could feel this energy, yeah? And I was making my way to Ballina County, Mayo in Ireland when I decided to make a quick stop at the beautiful Kilka Castle in County Kildare. One of the best parts of being able to travel the world like this is knowing that there's an easy way to keep in touch with what's going on at home. Pittsfield, community television video on demand. I can watch complete local meetings, attend elementary band concert, I'll miss why I'm on the road and enjoy some locally produced entertainment. It's all there on Pittsfield's website, www.pittsfieldtv.org. videos about books oh um i i mean i also i enjoy a lot of diff i would like to take more um involvement in that the thing is i i really am currently passionate about acting okay. and i would love to act on films that's something that i'm kind of keeping my options open about especially because i know that it is such a difficult world to break difficult. It into so I'm just looking at different aspects. I love the arts. Okay. So tell me about a, a YouTube channel. You do videos about books. Like about books that you have read and you talk about them? Um, sort of a combination. I have barely any of it right now because I actually just started it recently. That's okay. Um, but yeah, talking about books, so I'll do book reviews okay. or a haul just to like show what books, books that you've I'm been about to read. Okay. And then... It's just sort of a way okay. of discussion, and then people okay. can comment about their opinions on okay. some of the same books. It's a nice way to keep a, a little book log, too, of yeah. things that you have read, or uh -huh. are reading, or want to read. Yeah. I mean, I, it's so difficult to read when, when life is so busy, so it's a nice way to keep myself in check. There you go. And are you a student? Yes, I'm a senior in high school. Ah. Ooh, so, so this is, we're coming up on graduation. And then what? What's going to happen next for you? I'm at, well, I'm actually going to community college. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that community college in some ways um, just makes a lot more sense in a lot of situations because it's so much cheaper and I don't know exactly what I'm going into. You couldn't I went to community college. Yeah. It's fine. It's, yeah. it's a way it's to also. find out things that you like and things that you don't like. Yeah. It helps you, you know, you get to take a variety of classes and you're a lot cheaper. And you get you to experiment without wasting money. Right. Well, I think if you're learning, and even if you're learning what you don't like, it shouldn't be considered a waste of money. Yeah. But I understand that money is money. And we're talking thousands of dollars. So, yeah, you want to be mindful. Yeah. Um, so what college will you go to? Um, Hudson Valley. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And do you have a courses picked out already? I don't know if they've done started that already or not for college. Um. Yeah. I'm. Well, I'm actually going to go with the theater major. I'll Perfect. probably kind of be back and forth because I do also have plenty of space for electives. Nice. Yeah. And after that, I'd like to move to New York City. That's where the action is. So were you in plays in high school? I was. I did a lot of Shakespeare. Ooh. I love Shakespeare. Shakespeare's big here at the Berkshires, you know. We do a lot of Shakespeare in company. Yeah, I've and, seen some of them. Uh, did, were you able to participate in the Shakespeare Hall Festival? Yes, that's, that's the one. amazing. I've been to that with my daughter, who's also a big lover of Shakespeare, especially Midsummer Night's Dream. 
that's her favorite. Oh, and that's I, actually the last one we did. Is it? Yeah. I don't think we went this past year, but we almost always go just because she wants to see that and see I how it's done and how different groups interpret everything differently. Yeah, it's, it's just really amazing exciting because you see all the other shows. Yeah. I did see all of them, but we see some. But yeah. I played Puck, which is like, oh, I think that Puck that's and awesome. Bottom are the two best ones yes, in that. Yes, absolutely. You get to really show I don't really know Shakespeare, so. but I know those characters because, like I said, I've seen it six or seven times probably with my daughter. Okay, so if you're not reading and you're not acting, what other sorts of things? Um, I enjoy art. Okay. I, um, I sit on my couch quite a bit. Uh -huh. and <laughs> Well, I I mean, lately it's it's almost kind of hard to think about that just because I'm in school so often. Right. But yeah, I mean, I I also play music. Like I like um, I'm in the band and I play saxophone and I'm in the chorus. So there you go. So you got it all. So you do musicals, you do drama, you do yeah, lots. Lots and lots. So yeah. what's this summer going to be looking like for you with no school? Come on, brush your Oh, uh, <laughs> I... Currently, I don't actually have um, a lot of plans for summer. I have a few places in the area I might try and get involved with. Okay. Just in terms of getting a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I... Um, I know some people who work at a theater venue who, you know, I would be working like behind the counter. Okay. You know what? It takes a lot of people with a lot of different skill sets to make a theater happen. But yeah. We, and we need all of them. So. That sounds great. I'm so glad that you came by today. You said 30 minutes or so it took you to get over here from, from home? Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Bad, right? You come over from Pitts to Pitts Hill. Yeah. I mean, some, somewhat regularly. Okay. You have like one of the best theaters. Like those chairs are. Just... <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah. We have a theater in Chatham as well, but. Oh, Chatham. It's <laughs> a small little town. Yeah. Yeah. They have like they have the Crandalls and it's yeah. vintage and isn't that where Matt Haven? Yeah. Yeah, Chatham yeah, it's it's a small town but we have yeah. a lot going on. That's cool. Have you thought about going down? Have you ever been down there to see if you could get uh work down there? Matt Haven? Yeah. Um, I thought of it. I've um I have actually Huh? Is there another theater over there? The one in the round. Oh, there's oh, also the theater barn. There's also the one I'm thinking of, that's in New Yeah, there's also PS21, which oh. is they do different types of shows, like a lot of dances and concerts. And you didn't mention dance. Do you dance? Um, I'm I'm not very coordinated, so I I love dancing, <laughs> but I don't know that I'd say I'm good at it. Okay. Gotcha. I, um, I, I think I'm decent at singing. Okay. Well, that's lovely. Do you do solos in concerts? Or? Um, I just did a solo in the last concert. It was, well, for the jazz band, because I'm in the jazz band. Uh -huh. um, but I also got to sing a Supremes medley oh, with wow. two other girls. That's neat. Singing is something I also do, but not very well. <laughs> I sing loud, I sing often, but I don't sing well. <laughs> Singing yeah. in the car, I sing for myself mostly. Yeah, I mean that's but me that's with dancing. Yeah, okay, there you go. So anyway, I'm so glad that you came by tonight. I'm glad you're having nice fun. You. you did the green screen. I you did. did a couple of things. Did you do a little comedy bit over there? I did not. You did not. That looks then, like something I'd enjoy. Yeah, and then there's the membership tables. And then there's, I don't know, did you play around with any of the tech stuff? Where they control the sounds and oh, the that looks really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, I do computer yeah. stuff, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I was at an extra in a movie once, and they, um, it was really funny in some ways, though, seeing these sort of intimate scenes, but then you just have the person holding up like this big boomer and like yeah. getting in there. Yeah. So there you go. 
No, they're not. Anyway, nice to meet you. You too. And I hope I see you again sometime. Yes. Thanks. 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 My name's Flo Brett, and I'm in outer space. It's just me in the International Space, orbiting the Earth on, at nearly five meters a second, and I don't even need a spacesuit. How is it possible? Through the magic of television, of course. With technology available at Pittsfield Community Television, you too can float through space, or just about anywhere you dream or find out more Give. To find out more, give PCTV a call at 413-445-4234. Well, I hope to see you. Welcome to the Grand Canyon. My name is your my name is your name, Anahid, in one of the most beautiful of our country's national parks. Thinking of national parks, it reminds me, did you know that back home in Pittsfield there is a channel dedicated to national, state, and local government? No. It's called Oh, CityLink, and it can be found on Spectrum Cable at Channel 1303. CityLink is just one of the many services offered by Pittsfield Community Television, and it takes my breath away. How many organizations can offer such a, that, a thing like that to the community? A fact that certainly adds to this view. And welcome to our segment. I'm Christina Wynn. I'm one of the producers here at Pittsfield Community Television. And my guest, for a few minutes anyway, is Amanda Drain from the Berkshire Eagle. Hi, Christina. Thanks for being here. <laughs> my pleasure. So, Amanda, I really was very curious to hear a little bit more about you and your background. And uh, interesting, off, uh, off the air, you said that you hadn't always dreamed of being a reporter. It's true. So how did you get started? So I did always enjoy writing. I didn't, I didn't see writing as a viable career path because, you know, I had, I had uh, practical-minded <laughs> parents who felt like I should take a more lucrative career path, um, as, you know, as most parents encourage their children to do. Um, so I went to UMass and I switched my major a lot. I, I tried communications, English, philosophy, sociology, music before realizing that I really needed to, to figure my things out. Um, so I decided to come back to the Berkshires and go to Berkshire Community College where I took a bunch of writing classes. And I, un I didn't real, I didn't do it knowingly. I just, those were the classes that I kept picking: poetry and creative writing, um, English, and just came to realize I was really enjoying these classes. And I got really into writing and colorful and fun ways. And um, at the same time, I started dating my my boyfriend Wayne and um, he's he's not white and he I there were a couple instances in which I realized that he has a different experience in the world and I started thinking a lot about how I could use my skills to show people what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes and uh, it was an aha moment 
here that's in the a Berkshire. pretty big de big deal. I mean, when you when you say that you were at UMass and you switched your major so many times to finally be able to settle on something that you felt really good at, that must have been a really satisfying moment for you. Yeah. Yeah, I just, um, I decided after two semesters at BCC that I would go back to UMass and I did and I did it with a vengeance and I, I went back and finished in three semesters waitressing full time to pay the bills and uh, I did it. <laughs> so how did you go from UMass where you had sort of decided I'm going to be a writer to working now as a reporter at the Berkshire Eagle? Af while I was a student at UMass I got hired to do some writing and photography for the UMass website and um, so that was a pretty good gig. They paid me Twenty an hour <laughs> to uh, practice my my writing chops and learn photography on the job, and I did that for a little bit. And at the same time, tried to build a freelance rapport. I freelance for Mass Live, and um, then in 2014, I graduated in 2012. And in 2014, um, I saw an opening at the Valley Advocate. And I applied there, and that's where I worked first. Wow. And then you came to the Berkshire Eagle how long ago? In September. So still new, but you've been in the Berkshires for most of your life. Is that yeah. fair to say? I've lived in Western Massachusetts all of my life, and I am from the Berkshires, yeah. <laughs> so what's it like to cover the, your hometown in many ways, right? Whether it's you know Western Mass or Pittsfield, or what's it what's it like to report on your own community that you've known since you were a child? It feels good. It feels good. Um, I really know this place, and so I know I know its strengths and weaknesses. And um, even though I'm still relatively new at the Eagle, it felt like. The, it fit really well because I, it was a place I knew, it's a place I know, and um, it, I mean, reporting is all about knowing your community and knowing what they care about, and so, you know, that's, that's an evolutionary process, but um, it's, it's easier to do when you have so many connections in a community. Absolutely. So, thinking back to even the first jobs that you got as a reporter, is there a story that really sticks out for you that you're really proud of or that was really just like a unique experience? Yeah, the, the most in-depth reporting project I've done um, for six months I spent working on a series on undocumented restaurant workers in Northampton. It, it was a Hampshire County area story. and. Um, I, I worked in restaurants for nine years, it's what paid my way through, through college, and so I, I met a lot of undocumented workers along the way. Um, but when I heard one of them say, there, there was this um, restaurant fiasco in Northampton, it's very, very much a restaurant town, yes. and um, there was a report released by the UMass Labor Center that said a lot of, um, it, it said negative things about the restaurant industry and the way that it was treating restaurant workers in, in Northampton. And so there are a lot of questions about that. The, the, the restaurateurs were, were up in arms. It didn't, it, there was more information needed. There were, there were numbers, but no one really knew what, what was behind the numbers. The context, sure. And um, so I started talking to restaurant workers, and I had a lot of those connections from working in the industry in Western Massachusetts. And um, I, started, I started hearing something that restaurant kitchen workers in, in certain restaurants were systematically making less than minimum wage. And that was 
not that hadn't been my experience and my experience the the undocumented workers that I knew were were making the minimum wage which by the way in Massachusetts regardless of your immigration status the law is that you make minimum wage right that way the bar doesn't move yep. because if if anyone makes less than minimum wage then that affects the bar for everyone absolutely um, and so that was that was shocking to me that that some that someone was telling me that people in Massachusetts were systematically making below minimum wage and then I started hearing that some of them were also kept in worker housing as part of that deal wow. and some of that worker housing was really questionable um, but, you know, one worker told me he shared a living room floor six ways. And so I realized that this is a story that needed to be told. And um, it was really difficult to tell because this, these were vulnerable people who didn't want to lose their jobs. And so I and they're kept undocumented, so right. they already have concerns. Right, exactly. Um, so their concerns were, were big and there were multiple um, in the, I, I started building connections and, and talking to them um, and, and trying to basically waiting to see if they would feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the restaurant that they worked for uh, suddenly closed and they had no job on the line and they were very angry that the restaurant closed with no warning. And um, so I got to, they, at that point, realized that the timing was good and they were brave enough to let me follow them to New York City where they used job agencies in New York City. There's this network of, yep of job agencies in New York City that um, undocumented workers use to plug into jobs all over the country, or at least all over the East Coast. Um, and so I got to see that in action and kind of follow that trail of what it's like for an undocumented restaurant worker to go and try and find a new job and getting the bus ticket, the one-way bus ticket. And wow. Sounds like your experience was really compelling and um, you've built a lot of trust in your sh really relatively short time being a reporter, so it's, it's great that you've had that kind of experience and it's even better that you're now back in the Berkshires. So I'm getting a cue from our good friend Paul over there that we're going to wrap it up. Okay. So thank you for being my guest today. Thanks, Christina. Again, Amanda Drain from the Berkshire Eagle, and we'll see you again soon. Hey, this is Lucia taking a break on one of the most beautiful tropical beaches in the world. Beauty like this makes me feel creative and leads my warm meandering thoughts to all the television production skills I can learn at Pittsfield Community Television. Their professional production staff can help me learn how to operate a camera, edit with Final Cut Pro, and even become part of a studio crew. Knowing that they're, knowing that they're here to help me every step of the way to make my television show, it's almost more soothing than being here at this beach. Almost. Almost. to the Ballin County Mayo in Ireland and when I decided to make a quick stop at the beautiful Kakili Castle in County Kildare 
one of the best parts of being able to travel the world like this is knowing that there's an easy way to keep in touch with what's going on at the home in Pittsfield. Community television, if you the, the video on demand, I can watch complete local media, attend the elementary band concert, I miss while I'm on the road, and enjoy some locally produced entertainment. It's all about their NPT. PCTV website www.pittsfieldtv.org or or I hope you've been watching because we'll be waiting for you. Come on down. Welcome, thank you for tuning in. I am here with Kathleen, and Kathleen is one of my favorite people that you know I get to sit down and talk with because not only is she part of the Dream Center, she's on our leadership team, and she's absolutely incredible, but she is um, a community member as well. So for us at the Dream Center, it's important to get to know people in our community, hear from them, you know, what's important to them, and um, you know what what they're passionate about because that's how all of our outreaches and programs you know are developed is from people in the community because you know they know what's best for the neighborhood so I'll introduce at this time Kathleen <laughs> Hello. How, how are you <laughs> good how are you good so I thought you know we could just chat about things that are important to you in the community and also you know, your involvement with the Dream Center and maybe some people watching don't know what the Dream Center is. So maybe get the word out about that as well and, um, you know, okay. just see where the conversation takes us. Awesome. It's cool. The Dream Center is on 475 Tyler Street, right? We still have all the information, but yes, it's on Tyler Street. It's a wonderful church. When I, I'm born and raised in Pittsfield and I had left in my teen years, Woo! we all get a chance and then <laughs> 10 years later God brought me back you know I didn't know there was even a God but when I left town I had met him outside the state and then I got to know him in my heart it was time to come home so I searched in town everywhere I could look for a church so I was looking for a place where I felt like home and when I met Caitlin Miner she made me feel that way I'm not gonna get too deep because it gets to be emotional but they are a wonderful place. There are many programs. They have um, Sunday school services. They have a great band. With <laughs> the, she's on the band. So she, <laughs> they, they are great, though. <laughs> when I first, this is funny. When I first saw Jesse and not this Caitlin, there's two Caitlins. That's why I call Pastor Caitlin PK. So PK was there and I was looking up and I saw Jesse and singer Caitlin had a, were up there all by themselves and I'm like, Lord said, we got some talent, why don't you go help? And I'm like, are you sure, Lord? So I had, was debating back and forth and I said, well, Lord, I'm starving, hungry because I didn't want her to, my first meeting to be meeting my hungry monster. So I know somebody hasn't had met her. And I've apologized. We get over against me. But anyway, so back to the Dream Center was I had said, Lord, if she's there when I come, when I'm done with my lunch, I'm going on my bike ride, I'll see her. And if you want me to do it, I'll, I'll do it. But if she's not there, then I'll just have to catch her the following week. But uh-uh, sure enough, God's got other plans. See, God's ways are not man's ways. <laughs> So I went on my bicycle thinking, I stayed the way long enough. They shouldn't be there by now. <laughs> I didn't know that, that you were trying not to, <laughs> I was trying scared. Not to see me. Because <laughs> she was just so awesome. When I, I didn't really meet her earlier. I just sat back and watched from afar. And then the, I love you so much. <laughs> the things that you learned, this is awesome. <laughs> And it's, and it's online too, and we can post it, and people can hear your story. Yay. It's great. <laughs> no, keep going. So you're watching from afar. So then I, so I did that agreement with God. I jumped on my bike and said, sure enough, she's got to be gone by now. They had lunch plans and everything. But nope, I come pedaling around the corner, and out she comes. 
exactly out the church. No lie, my bicycle stopped right. She was coming down the sidewalk. I couldn't get any closer to her. I'm almost there when my bike goes that close. And then I giggled, and so I explained what I just told you guys about seeing Jesse. I didn't tell her the other part about God told me to come here, none of that. I just said that. I see Jesse's up there all by himself and with Caitlin the singer that, you know, and I played 12th Street at the guitar at the time. And so I said, does he need any help? And she's like, oh, praise God. He says, yes, oh, he's been praying to somebody. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Her energy was so, oh, it's awesome and exciting. And I said, oh, I don't get to see this anywhere else usually. You know, you see some happy, but you, you know, you learn to know the phony balonies. She's not phony baloney, and that's what sticks out for me. And I love bragging about her because she's beautiful. I don't get too deep because then I cry. <sighs> but she's awesome. I was actually giving a tour yesterday, <laughs> and Wednesday is, <laughs> is our busy day where we serve, you know, the community with food and clothing. And so we served, you know, over 110 families um, within just a few hours, um, you know, which represents hundreds of people and so she's one of the people when you come in you meet she's there greeting you and she'll you know give, give you a shopping list where you get to pick what you want and so I just I tried to walk by like you know for the tour and she caught me and she announced <laughs> me she makes my face turn red <laughs> she's too. Fast for Caitlin. but she's she's just so awesome and we're so blessed to have her part of the Dream Center and as I said she's a leader of our small groups um, she teaches our older kids, 7 to 11 year olds on Sunday. She's on our worship team on the band and she's, she just has such a loving heart. She's on our TV crew as well. She helps out and she you know, even pops on our TV show and there's many more ways you know, that she's such a blessing to any area to serve. Kathleen just serves wholeheartedly and like she said, you can tell people who really care. And, you know, your heart and, you know, your smile and your life truly show that. Oh, so you, you. you're such a blessing. And you are too. So you it's literally saved my soul. I felt like I was in the desert. Where was I going to go? Found the Dream Center. Pastor Caitlin, on the street I call her PK. So <laughs> if you see her out there, go ahead and call her that. She won't get mad. No. That's what I like about her. She gets you, even though that might be an oddballer. You know, the world's got to call me a weirdie. That's okay. At least they notice. And, and Pastor Kaylin's always been kind to me. And I like that. And she'll be kind to you, too. So I hope you all come. Woo! It would be awesome. So let me ask you, now that we have some time, two questions. First one is, um, if you could see something in your community change, what would that be? Or you could also answer, <coughs> what's most important to you? in your community? I would like to see the community come together and get rid of hatred and stop the bullying and stop turning our backs on the kids that are being bullied. You know, stop looking away and, you know, I would like that the children can have a communication area to, to tell somebody, help, I need help. You know, not to be made silly or anything like that. And I, I like the church is a very base based like foundation, they love Jesus, and that's the most important part. It's Jesus in your heart, and there's your start. And the Dream Center will help you grow from there, and you guys are awesome. So I want families to come together and then the hate be gone. You know, let us be the first state, yeah. or the first city that's just so full of love that when people even cut through town, they say, gosh, I felt the love. That's what I want. For and the, the church is called to be, uh, you know, beacon of hope and light in our community, and to have it start with us. That hatred shouldn't exist within the church. There should be no judgment, no hatred, right. and just acceptance. And um, the last question, because I know we're running out of time, is: um, Have you heard a good joke lately? Let, let's, let's see. Oh, I got one for you. Okay, this this thief comes into the house. Right, and he goes to steal a TV, and he hears, Jesus is watching you. So he turns around and says, what's that? And he sees a parrot. He looks at you, and he goes, who are you? And the parrot goes, my name's Moses. And the, the guy looks at him and says, what kind of family would name a parrot Moses? And so the parrot replies back, 
the same people that would name a 250 pound Rottweiler named Jesus. So. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> See, I got that from Joel Olstein. That's, That's not great. my original. That's awesome. Oops. Well, thank you for your time and oh, thank sharing, you. you know, your heart and your story with everyone watching. And oh, thank hopefully, you. Hopefully, you know, the viewers that saw this will come by and see us at the Dream yeah. Center. And our website is www.berkshiredreamcenter.org. We're located at 475 Tyler Street, and our Sunday morning service is at 11 a.m. My husband and I are the pastors, and we would love to see you. Thanks for watching. Thank you thank for being you. here. Oh, You're thank awesome. you for having me. Oh, hi, bye. <laughs>much for watching the productions from PCTV studio to you. If everything you saw excited you and you thought it might be cool to give it a try, PCTV's facility at 4 Federico Drive is always available for you to get involved with the things that you saw created. Visit us at the station, call us at 445-4234 or visit us online at www.pittsfieldtv.org. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you at the station. Take care. Bye-bye.